Welcome to this video. Today I will be walking you through some basic Mac maintenance and cleaning, which will include the removal of all viruses, malware, adware, and spyware, as well as we will be optimizing the computer to make sure that it's running at its peak efficiency. Please be aware that I will be listing all the steps down below in the notes down in the video description, as well as any and all important links will be listed down there as well. And there will also be timestamps, so please follow along down below in the notes. Please be aware that yes, I am doing this on Mac OS Mojave. However, if you're using an older version of Mac OS, this will still work because the steps are basically the same. For step number one, what you will need to do first is come down here to the bottom and go ahead and open up the finder. And then you'll want to go up to the very top up here where it says go and click on go and then go down to where it says utilities and click on utilities. And then over here in the window, you'll notice right here it says disk utility. Go ahead and open up the disk utility and then depending on which version of macOS you're running, if you're running an older version of macOS, you may have multiple options over here in the left-hand column. If you're running a more recent version, you'll only have one. What you'll need to do is if you see multiple options, you'll need to select the top options and then work your way down and do this for each option. However, you can see because I'm using the most recent version of macOS, there's only one option here. So you'll just wanna make sure that it's selected and then come over here and click on first aid and then you'll want to click on run. And then before you click on continue, just make sure that you close and save everything else that you're working on. And then after you have done that, go ahead and click on continue. Now, once you get a message like this with a green check mark, you know that you are completed. You can go ahead and click on done. And then at this point, if you see additional options in the left-hand column, you would then go down the list and do it for those options as well. But again, if you're doing a, or using a recent version of macOS, you can see there will only be one. And at this point, you are completed and finished with step one. Now for step number two, you will want to go down to the notes below down in the video description. And underneath step number two, there is a link there that you need to click on, which will take you to this page, which is for a free anti-malware program for Mac. Just go ahead and click on the free download button to download it. And once the download has completed, go ahead and open it up to install it. And you'll just want to continue through the installation process. Please be aware that if at any point during the installation you get a message that it has been blocked, you will need to come up here to the top left corner and click on the Apple icon, go down to System Preferences, and then look for where it says Security and Privacy and click on it. And then you'll want to come over here to the General tab, and then right here in this area is going to list malware bytes and give you an option to allow it to install. At this point, we can go ahead and click on close. You can go ahead and move the installer to the trash. We're going to select personal computer and hit continue. And then once we have it fully installed, we want to come over here to settings and then go over to the my account option. And we want to deactivate premium trial because we only want to use the free version. So I'm going to go ahead and click on deactivate. And then if we close this window, we can see right here that it now says free. And then before we run the scan, we want to come up here to the top left corner and click where it says malware bytes and go down to where it says check for updates and click on it. If it's up to date, you'll get a message like this. If it's not, it will go ahead and update. You can go ahead and close this message and then go ahead and just click on scan now. You'll just want to let the computer sit until the scan is fully completed. And then once it's completed, it will give you any results if any are found and give you the option to remove them. Just make sure that you remove any and all results that are found to remove the malware off of your computer. For step number three, we need to run an antivirus scan. And so if you go back down to the notes underneath step number three, there are four options there with links to free antivirus programs that you can run on your Mac computer. Only pick one of them because you never ever wanna run more than one antivirus program at the same time on your computer. And so the options that are available are Avast, AVG, Avera and Sophos. Again, only pick one. And again, they're all free. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and go with Avast. And so whichever one you want to use, go ahead and download and install it. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and open up the installer to start the installation process. We'll double click on Avast Security, and then we will just continue through the installation. We do not want to install anything extra, so I'm going to uncheck these boxes and then click on Continue. If you get a message like this, just go ahead and click on OK. Now, just like with Malwarebytes, if you get a message like this saying that it's being blocked, again, just click on the Apple icon in the top left corner, go to System Preferences, and then come over to Security and Privacy and click on it. 
and then you'll just want to make sure you have the general tab selected and then right here down below there will be an allow option to allow it through you'll just want to click on allow and then there may be a bit of a delay but eventually you'll get a green check mark such as you see here once your antivirus is installed and up and running, just make sure that you go into the settings and locate the update option. All antivirus programs have an update option. And it's very important that you update first before you run the scan, otherwise it may not detect the most recent infections. So go ahead and update it. After you have completed the update process, just go ahead and locate the scan option and then look for where it says full system scan. And you can go ahead and start running the scan. Just let the computer sit until it is fully completed. And then after it has finished scanning, if it has found any results, it will list them and give you the option to remove them. For step number four, we need to check the computer to see if there was a malicious profile installed. And to do that, you'll click on the Apple icon up in the top left corner and click on System Preferences. Now on this menu, what you need to look for is an icon that says profiles and it will have a check mark. It looks just like this one that you see on the screen right now. Now if you do not see this icon on this menu then you're good. You can go ahead and skip this step and skip to step 5. However if you do see this icon double click on it and on the next menu in the left hand column click where it says admin preferences so that it's selected and then go to the bottom left corner where it has that minus button and click on the minus button to remove it off of your computer. For part five, we need to go through and clean out the web browsers. And so part five will have three parts. For part A, we're going to start with Google Chrome. And so go ahead and open up Google Chrome on your end. And the first thing we need to do is click on the menu button in the top right corner, go down to where it says help, and then over to about Google Chrome. And this will just make sure that Chrome is up to date. After you have verified that Chrome is up to date, go back to the menu button in the top right corner and go down to where it says more tools and then over to extensions and open that up. Now, before we do anything here, come up to the top right corner and click on the developer mode switch and then come over here to update and click on update just to make sure all of the extensions are up to date. Now, a few things to note with extensions, they're very fun, they're convenient, but they are terrible for security, they're terrible for privacy, and they slow your web browser down. And so I strongly recommend that you remove as many extensions as possible. The only exception I would make is for if you have a, an extension that has to do with a password manager or password keeper, I would keep that one. But anything else you should go ahead and remove to increase security, privacy, and also to in increase performance. Please also note that Google Chrome comes with some default extensions and so we're going to turn these off while they are not in use by clicking the blue switch. If you see any extension with the word toolbar in it, it does not matter where it's from, it absolutely must be removed. And so in order to remove it, we're going to click on the remove button. We're also going to remove Pinterest even though it's a legitimate company with a legitimate extension, it's still terrible for privacy, security, and performance. So we're going to click remove on this one as well. And then last, because we're making an exception for our password manager, we're going to go ahead and disable it while it's not in use. After you have finished removing the extensions, you'll want to go back to the top right corner to open up the menu. And this time go down to settings. And often when malware gets on your computer, it will change certain settings in your browsers. And so some things you'll want to double check is if you go down underneath the uh, appearance section, right here there's an option to double check your home page. Just flip the switch, which will also add a home button up here in the top left corner. But right here we can check to see what the home page is. We can select this bottom option and just type in whatever we want the home page to be for Google Chrome. I'm just going to set it to google.com. And then additionally, if we go down to the search engine section, malware will often change your default search engine. So just make sure you click on the drop down and select the default that you would like to use for your search engine. And then also underneath on startup, this is what Chrome does when you first open it. And so for example, if you need it to open up a specific page, you can click on add new. For example, we could do ESPN.com if we wanted to or any website. But again, check all three of those settings because those are common settings that get changed when malware gets installed on your computer. For part B, we need to clean out Mozilla Firefox. And so go ahead and open it up. And then in the top left corner, click where it says Firefox and go down to About Firefox. This will just double check and make sure that it is up to date. And then after you have made sure that it is up to date, go ahead and click on the Menu button and go down to where it says Add-ons. And then just make sure in the left-hand column you have extension selected. 
and then click on this little gear icon and go down to check for updates and click on it. Now the same rules apply here as with Google Chrome. We want to remove as many extensions as possible. The only exception I would make is for our password manager. Again, if you see anything with the word toolbar in it, it absolutely must go. And so we're going to go ahead and click on remove. And then we're also going to remove Pinterest. And then for the one that we're making an exception for, we're going to go ahead and just hit disable so it's not running while it's not in use. After you have finished cleaning up the extensions, go ahead and click on the menu in the top right corner. And this time go down to preferences. And again, just like with uh, Google Chrome, we want to double check the settings here in Mozilla Firefox. And so underneath general, up here at the top, we will have our startup options that we can check as well as we can click on home to adjust our home page if needed. We can do so right here. And then under search, we can come down here and adjust our search engine, our default search engine, if needed. For part C, we need to clean up Safari. And so go ahead and open up Safari and then come to the top left corner and click on Safari and go down to where it says preferences. And then from here, the first thing we want to do is come over to the section where it says extensions. Just go ahead and click on that option. It will list all of your extensions in the left hand column. Again, same rules apply. We want to remove as many extensions as possible. So to remove the uh, Pinterest extension, we're just going to click right here and click on uninstall and then click on uninstall again. And then last pass is our password manager. So we're going to keep it, but we're going to disable it while it's not in use. So we're going to uncheck this box and then also just double check and make sure that this box is checked in the bottom left corner to make sure that it updates automatically. And then just like with the previous browsers, we want to double check the settings. So we're going to come over here to search and we can double check to see what our default search engine is right here. We can adjust it if needed and then also click on the general tab. And here we can check to see what happens when Safari first opens as well as right here, we can double check to see what our home page is and change it if needed. For step number six, we need to make sure everything is up to date. So to do so, you'll come to the top left corner, click the Apple icon and go to about this Mac and click on it. And then right here, you'll notice the software update option. Go ahead and click on it. After it has checked for updates, it will list one if one is available and you'll just want to click on update now. Now, after you have completed any needed system updates, you will also want to come back to the top left corner, click on the Apple icon and go down to where it says App Store and click on it and then look for where it says updates and here it will list any necessary updates for the applications on your computer. So you will want to make sure to go ahead and do all of these updates as well. Now, if at any time during the update process, if it asks or prompts you to restart the computer, go ahead and do so. And please keep in mind, these updates are very, very important because they include security updates that can help protect you from future problems. For step number seven, we're going to optimize the computer a little bit. And so to do so, just come back to the top left corner, click on the Apple icon and go to system preferences. And this time look for where it says users and groups and open it up. And then the first thing you'll need to do is click on this padlock so that way we can make some changes. You'll need to go ahead and type in your computer password. And then once you have done so, go ahead and just click on lock and then make sure you have your username uh, selected and then come over here to login items. And this will give you a list of all of the applications that are set to run when you first turn the computer on. Now you want to get this list down to zero because there is no reason for any application to be running in the background when you turn your computer on. So to do that, you just select the application and hit the minus sign to get it off the list. And then just do that for each one until you have zero uh, items on this list. And then just make sure once you have finished that you click on the padlock to lock it again. For step number eight, we're just going to double check a couple security settings on your computer. And to do so, you'll just come back to the top left corner, click on the Apple icon and go back to system preferences. And then at this point, look for security and privacy and open it up. And then just make sure you have the file vault tab selected. This is a built in feature in Mac OS to encrypt the drive in your computer. I strongly recommend that you turn this on, especially if you use a portable uh, MacBook Pro or MacBook, something that's easily lost or stolen. To turn this on, you will need to first click on the padlock to unlock it. It will ask for your computer password and then there will be an option right here to turn it on. You'll also want to check the firewall option as well just to make sure that this is turned on. Again, if it's not, unlock the padlock, turn it on right here. And then 
When you're finished, make sure you click the padlock again to lock those settings in place. For step number nine, we want to go through and clean out the garbage data. And so if you go back down to the notes down in the video description, underneath step number nine, there's a link there that will take you to this page for CCleaner for Mac, which is a free program that can be used to clean out garbage data. You'll just wanna go ahead and download the free version. Once it has downloaded, you wanna go ahead and open up the installer to start the installation process. And then we just wanna drag it down to the applications folder. And then once it's installed, we just want to open up the finder and come over here to applications on the left-hand side. And we'll notice that CCleaner is now available. Let's go ahead and open it up. We'll just wanna click on open. If it asks for permission to access your contacts, just hit don't allow. When CCleaner opens underneath the Mac OS X option, just make sure that your settings match mine. Do not check anything below directory service cache. And then also check the applications tab. And I would just match the exact same settings I have as well here. Do not delete your saved password or saved form information from your browsers. You do not want to lose that information. So again, just take a moment to make sure that your settings match exactly what you see here on the screen. And if it all checks out, go ahead and click on the Run Cleaner option in the bottom right corner and click on Yes. Please note if you get a pop-up prompting you to close your web browsers, go ahead and just click on Yes because it will not run if you have any web browsers open. If you get a message like this one saying that CCleaner wants access to Control Finder, go ahead and click on OK. And once it has finished, it will show 100% completion as well as give you a detailed report as to what was removed off of your Mac computer. For step number 10, we need to go through and remove all of the garbage applications off of our Mac computer. And to do that, we just come down here and open up the Finder. And then just make sure you have the Applications tab selected in the left-hand column. And then here it will list all of the applications that are on your Mac. Now first off, you will want to remove CCleaner, the antivirus program that was installed, in this case Avast, as well as Malwarebytes. So make sure that you remove those three things off of your computer. And then some other key things I would keep an eye out for is if you see an application with the word toolbar in it, make sure that you remove it. If you see an application or program you know that you no longer use or no longer need, remove that as well. And also keep an eye out for anything that claims to be a cleaner or optimization program. Those are often bad. So I would also remove those. Chances are if you did get some sort of malware, adware, or virus on your computer, there's a good chance that something bad was in, uh, installed on your Mac. And so make sure you do a really good job on this step because the better job you do here, the better result you will have, the better performance you will have with your Mac computer. Now if you come across something that you do not recognize and don't know what it is, you can always go to google.com and search for it. There's a lot of information out there that will tell you whether or not a program is good, bad, or whether or not it should be removed. I will also post a link down below in the notes, down in the video description to this website, which is called shouldiremoveit.com, and it's generally for PCs. However, a lot of Mac programs can be found here as well because it's cross-platform, and if it's bad for PC, you can count on it being bad for Mac as well. And so you just search for it here in this search box, and then it will give you a rating. If it's yellow, orange, or red, you know that you should remove it. And if you can't find the program on this website, again, you'll just wanna search for it on google.com. Now, for those of you who are unsure of how to remove a program, all you do is you click on the icon, for example, with CCleaner, and you just drag it down to the trash, and that will remove it. And you just have to do that for each application that you need to remove and uninstall. Now, after you have moved all of the applications to the trash, make sure you open up the trash and then click on this little gear icon and go to empty trash to fully remove it. And then after you do that, you will need to click on the Apple icon and restart your computer. After the computer has restarted, make sure to go back down to the trash and open it up one more time just because when you're uninstalling applications after a computer restarts, sometimes you will notice that there are still items in the trash. That's normal if it does happen. All you have to do is click on the gear icon and empty it one more time and it will be gone for good. That's everything for this video. I hope it was helpful. However, if you do have any comments, questions, need help or get stuck, feel free to post those down below in the comments. I do respond to those as quickly as possible as well as other people will chime in and help out as well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, please go ahead and consider sharing it. And please also consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications on future videos.